having set the company back a staggering $18.7 billion and tainted its once perfect image, the 737 MAX is finally back on the runway, this time carrying fare paying passengers. But the story of the MAX isn't all just about the grounding, scandals or safety oversights. The story of the 737 MAX has its own sets of upsides. Watch this epic documentary documenting the rough and turbulent story of Boeing's best selling aircraft ever, the 737 MAX. The story of the MAX itself didn't start on a positive note. Back in 2010, with the launch of rival A320neo, many airlines turned to Boeing for their response. Boeing felt no one wanted a re-engine, but the assumption quickly backfired. With 15% fuel burn savings, the NEO quickly went on to sell over 1,000 units within 6 months of its launch. What made NEO so attractive was the cost savings as a whole. As the aircraft was based on the A320, maintenance costs were about the same, while pilots do not have to receive expensive simulator training to fly the new aircraft. Many airlines asked Boeing for a re-engined 737. However, as the 737 was an old design, based on 1960s technologies, re-engining the aircraft would come with some huge challenges. Instead, Boeing was looking into launching a brand new replacement that would in turn be more efficient than the A320neo. It would however come at the cost of double digit billions and the timing would be late to the market. Boeing was pushed into a tough choice though their minds would soon be made up. Having been an all Boeing customer for quite a while, American announced orders for 130 of Airbus's new aircraft and strong armed Boeing into a re engined 737 by placing an intention to order 100 of them. No design concepts were being drawn up at that point in time. Penalized with a six month delay over Airbus's re engine, Boeing quickly rushed to work on building the ultimate 737. Work began to reduce fuel burn, and with CFM being the only engine supplier for 737s at the time, they elected to power the re-engined 737. However, Boeing quickly ran into its first big hurdle, the lack of space for those new engines. Much of the fuel saving benefits come from higher bypass ratios, which necessitates a larger fan diameter. However, the low ground clearance of 737 models became an issue and Boeing struggled to fit a large fan. They eventually decided on a fan diameter of 69 inches with the CFM Leap 1B. Boeing raised the engine positions on the wing, developed new pylons and jacked up the nose gear by about 7 inches. Boeing still lost a couple of percentage points at power plant level and thus turned to another area to reduce fuel burn, aerodynamics. to their design teams and rolled out their new advanced technology winglets. They enhanced the design with new laminar technologies and applied this to the MAX. Along with this, Boeing redesigned the tail cone of the MAX for smoother airflow. Wind tunnel tests of these enhancements showed impressive results. 
All in all, the aerodynamic improvements would give the 737 Max a 14% reduction in fuel burn. With the design finally firmed up, the race was on to build the first 737 Max and deliver it as soon as possible. The first 737-8 entered the final assembly line in August 13 of 2015, and near the end of that year, on December the 8th, the aircraft, nicknamed Spirit of Renton, rolled out of the Renton factory where it was assembled. The first Max was ready to soar into clear skies for its maiden flight. 29th of January 2016, nearly 49 years since the first 737 took off, the latest iteration of the hugely popular workhorse is ready for its first flight. Out of a very rainy event, workers and employees all standing out in the rain to watch the first Max have its first flight. was a success and Boeing quickly moved on with the flight test campaign, not least rushed by the lead Airbus has got for its A320 year. Four flight test aircraft participated in a flight test campaign which lasted little over a year. In what would later become subject of scrutiny, the FAA delegated many evaluations on its systems over to Boeing. However, performance tests were still subject to rigorous testing. To showcase the Max, Boeing performed many photo shoots, showcasing the capabilities of the Max in a crazy demonstration. Eventually, the MAX 8 received its type certificate on the 8th of March 2017 from the FAA and 27th in that same month from EASA. With that cleared quickly, Boeing could deliver the first 737 MAX to customers, starting with Melindo Air taking delivery on the 16th of May 2017. Norwegian received their aircraft not long later, and initially the launch customer for 737 MAX, Southwest eventually took delivery of the MAX on the 29th of August. Boeing also started work on the larger MAX 9, which took off on the 13th of April 2017. Thirty percent of tests were already carried out by the smaller Max 8, thus the certification came quickly with two flight test aircraft and the Max 9 was handed over to Lion Air on the 21st of March 2018. 
things though were more complicated for the smaller 737 MAX, the MAX 7. During the 2016 Farnborough Air Show, Boeing announced the new MAX 7 is to use wings and more airframe components from the MAX 8, allowing a slight stretch in the fuselage and 12 more seats giving it lower seat cost than a rival 8-19neo. However, demand for the MAX 7 wasn't huge and it received little orders from airlines. Certification of this model wasn't of the top priority, the type having its first flight only in 2018. At that point, all pressure was on the supply chain to ramp production up to an incredible rate 52. The design teams were busy too. While the MAX 8 sold well, larger MAX 9 didn't, with rival A321neo gaining all the orders. In 2015, Korean Air placed huge orders for the A321neo and urged Boeing to launch a larger 737. Initially, they felt the cost wasn't worth it as they were busy with their new NMA program. However, engineers at Boeing decided to focus on competing with the A321neo on shorter routes and focused on efficiency. After studies on what more could be done to MAX 9, they came up with their largest 737 yet. Engineers chose a simple low-risk approach by simply increasing the MAX 9 fuselage by 66 inches and coming up with a new landing gear, eliminating the need for a new wheel well. The MAX 10 could carry up to 230 passengers, making it ever closer to the A321neo. However, with supplier issues due to the fast production line, Boeing elected to work on this variant a little later on. With the MAX setting in huge numbers and the production line at full swing, things couldn't have been looking better for Boeing. However, things would take a drastic downturn for the worse. The remains of the first Lion Air crash devastated many who lost their loved ones. Immediately after the search for the black boxes began, a brand new aircraft had plunged into the ocean just 8 months after entering service. Investigations began, though in a shock to the world, Boeing admitted the addition of a new flight control system on the MAX. They continued to insist that pilots should have been able to pilot the MAX out of a nose-down situation brought about by MCAS. Boeing highlighted the safety of the MAX was on par with previous 737s and that pilots had all the necessary information to fly it safely. Many pilots, while shocked, still kept their faith in a MAX aircraft which continued to roam the skies freely up to the 10th of March 2019. The sun rose over yet another devastating scene in a field Addis Ababa airport. The remains of ET302 scattered all over by the crash of yet another MAX airliner. With more and more similarities between the two crashes, China became the first country to ground all MAX aircraft, with the US regulator being the last. This wouldn't be the only event that damaged the credibility of the FAA. Throughout the investigation, the FAA was held accountable for delegating too much certification work to Boeing and failed to maintain safety standards. Many airlines started cancelling orders while a criminal investigation was being held. take a detailed investigation report before Boeing finally admitted to their mistakes in their development of the MAX. Boeing was still pressured and gave overly optimistic return to service dates, eventually following the poor handling of the crisis which only further tainted the image of the Boeing brand. A new top management was assigned to fix tensions with the regulator and safely return the MAX back into service.
thorough investigation into all aircraft systems was carried out, which included wiring fixes, engine fixes, structural checks, and new software. On the 29th of July 2020, the MAX was on the runway again, heading out for one crucial flight. The MCAS system was consistently being tested during the MAX's recertification flight. Following a couple more hours of scrutiny, the MAX touches down safely at Boeing Field. It would take two more flights on the MAX 7 before the recertification flight test campaign finally ended. The next few months gone by slowly for Boeing, with the coronavirus having its huge impact on the aviation industry as a whole. FAA regulator chief himself took the yoke, but at last, the FAA deemed the MAX safe to fly. The production line was finally up and running, while the aircraft quietly returned back into service. The MAX takes off for its uneventful flight. While this journey was smooth and uneventful, the story of the MAX most certainly isn't. But through the ups and downs, the aviation industry has made steps to become safer, and with the MAX airplanes flying around the world safely again, the MAX will succeed on its highly reliable predecessor, proving to the world Boeing is back to building the safest airplanes ever to fly.